Good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you? Pastor Sean Bowman coming to you from Jamestown, North Dakota, live. Coming to you live. Don't want to let you down. This isn't a pre recorded thing. No, no, this is live. And uh, I, at this point, have one person, Gene and Shirley Wolf. Well, Gene and Shirley, if I have you guys, we can get rolling. Yes, indeed. Bless you guys. Good to have you. Sandy Burns. Hello, dear sister. How are you? You must be working lately. I haven't seen you for a while. Mary Pat Wall. Good to have you getting on. There's cousin Ray Lynn. Absolutely one of my favorite cousins. Absolutely. And then we got Mary Pat Wall. Good morning. South Dakota's checking in. Hey, tell my son hi down there, Wayne and Eunice. Welcome. We're glad to have you guys. Of course, we miss you. Yes, we do. Man, it's never easy to lose a good parishioner. They moved away. They moved back to family, of course. That's the way that goes. But, hey, we uh, once we get a good, a good parishioner, we hate to lose them. That's the way it is. We just love to have a good prisoner to stick around because they are such a blessing to the body and and uh, we definitely definitely knew that that was uh the case with Irvin oh with Irvin Eunice too yeah they're good too but with Wayne and Eunice what a gift and there we have what the world is this Sharon Odegaard Jim Buckeye and Mrs. Paige Buckeye saying good morning good morning we're glad to have you guys this morning we're gonna do something I've never done this today. We're gonna do something brand new. You guys tell me what you think of it, wh how you like it. Um, as you know, for those of you that were in church or watched me online in church last Sunday, I got through half of my sermon. Half. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just uh, we're gonna work through the other half of my message from Sunday, which I think I really believe I it was like oh. The blessing part of the message. So, for my 20 faithfuls that hop on on, on in the morning, plus for the others uh, that hop on, um, I just noticed my October 1st, 2nd, 3rd um, devotional. Uh, we have 1,700 views. 1,700 for for one one devotional. So I I was praising God for that, and uh, some of them have 1,100, 1,200. Some have seven eight hundred but God's hearing our prayer you know and he's he's reaching out with the word he's he's declaring the good news through us I couldn't do it without you because um, how we reach people is uh, you when you hit share and you hit like every person on your Facebook <clears throat> they 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 are they are immediately reached with the gospel and it's it's the best electronic way to evangelize that, that we can possibly do. So I always encourage you to do that because we're we're seeking to to win people for Christ. So I'm gonna read uh, I'm gonna read the the scripture text for today. We're gonna hop into the Word, and uh, I, I've got nine people watching so far. Kind of a low number, maybe. You know, who? I, my mother told me, uh, maybe you should look at going back to 10 o'clock. I don't know. I mean, maybe 10 o'clock works better. Yesterday, we got going after 9.30, and I had a pretty good crowd. Uh, I don't know. What do, you, what do you guys think? Let me know if you think 10 would be better. We could do that. 9 would be better. We could do that. But uh, I'm going to read uh, in Jesus' name. We're going to take a look at Exodus 3, 1 to 14, talk a little bit about Moses. And uh, I pray that you're blessed as we dig into this text. Hello, Shelly Lund. Bless you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good to have you, Shelly. Now, Moses was tending the flock with Jethro. Jethro was Moses' father-in-law. And he was a priest from Midian. And uh, he led the flock as far, wa as, as far, uh, he led the flock to the far side, excuse me, of the desert. It was to a place that they called Horeb. And uh, it was near a famous mountain that we'll talk about in a little bit later uh, because uh, that mountain eventually become the mountain of God. It's where God did a lot of business with the Israelites uh, uh, while they wandered in the desert. 
Number two, there the angel of the Lord appeared to Moses <coughs> and he appeared to him in a flame in a bush. Moses saw that through the bush was a flame and it was burning, but the bush wasn't burning up. Verse 3, so Moses thought, I need to go over and just see what's going on over there. So he, Moses walked over there and he thought to himself, why doesn't this bush burn up? When the Lord saw that he had walked over and the Lord knows your thoughts and what he was thinking, God called to Moses from within the flame, within the bush. Okay, Terry. Terry's voting for nine. Sounds good. Nine works for me. I like nine because then I can get on with my morning. Ten is kind of right in the dead center. So he calls to him right in the middle of the flame. Verse four. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, he called to Moses and he called him by name. Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I, here I am. Does that bring back any memories? Samuel, little little boy, God calls out to him. Eli tells Samuel, say, here I am. When the Lord calls your name, what should you say? You know it. Good morning, Lulu. I love your little good morning clips on Facebook. Yeah, when the Lord calls your name, you too should say, here I am. Because the Lord is going to speak to you, and he always speaks to you when the word of God is read. When God's word is read, God is speaking. The Holy Spirit is always present with God's word. Okay, so those, those, there's just a little caveat there. Let's go to verse 5. God said to Moses, do not come any closer. And then God said this. Now this is interesting. He told Moses, take off your sandals for the place that you're standing is holy ground. I'll never forget one time I took Hebrew in seminary and our professor talked about, you know, this could be understood in a lot of ways. But what we know is when you go before the holy and righteousness of God, he wanted him to take his sandals off and to, and to, and to put on his best before God. And he said, you know, Sunday morning is not about putting on a $5,000 suit. If you got five sweaters in your closet and you grab your junkiest, ripped up, crappiest sweater you've got and you put it on for Sunday morning and you leave your nicest one in the closet. God says to Moses, take your sandals off for your standing on holy ground. It wouldn't hurt any of us to put on our best pair of jeans if that's all we have is a pair of jeans grab your very best pair if you got a, a a real nice shirt put your nicest shirt on for it's Sunday we're going to worship God we just we go before the holiness of God knowing that we're going to expect something great if you got a nice suit there's nothing wrong with that put it on the only danger of it is some people would judge other people because they don't wear a suit. Now we've gone from wanting to be in the presence and holiness of God to Pharisees. I don't want to be a Pharisee. You you check your heart. You look in the closet and you see what can I what can I when I go before God, how can I know that I am worshiping him and I've put on my very best. So just a little teaching. Most of you guys you understand this teaching. It's most of the kids that are in their teenage and 20s right nowadays. They need to hear this little teaching because they're missing it. They really are. And um, they, need to, uh, they need to hear more of it because, yes, God, just want, God wants you in church. He loves you. But there's something about the awe of God, the awesomeness of God, the holiness of the, of the, of the um, moment when you come into the sacred service. What's that mean? Well, it's when God's liturgical words are... Well, it's, what's that? It's when God's words of, of law and gospel, 
of confession and absolution, when the work of God is present in the minds and hearts of sinners so they can hear themselves convicted and they can hear themselves saved and forgiven. That's what God wants to do with all of you and me because we're his children. All right, I digress. I digress. And I must flow because well, this same thing could happen to me today is what happened on Sunday. And I'm not even done reading the scripture and I've got places to go. Here we go. So, let's roll on here. Uh, he says, don't come any closer. Take your sandals off. For the place you're standing is holy ground. It's holy ground. Then, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Okay, that's big. Because that's your God too. And he said, at this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Pause. God calls Moses to the burning bush. God speaks his holy word into Moses, who was running because of sin. Remember, he killed a man. He was running from sin. And when God speaks his word into Moses, Moses is now uh, 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 brought into the presence of God. And then he sent out as God's chosen one to deliver his people. Do you hear a theme here, everybody? This is what we are called to do. And so he calls Moses to go to his people, because he's drawing the Israelites out of Egypt, Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and, this, and, and, and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? What then shall I tell them? God said, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. So, uh, on Sunday, uh, I just want to quickly go through some of the things that I was hitting. Now, I want to get I want to get into uh, into this text where where I was where I was sitting on Sunday, so that we could we could really wrestle with some of this here. But um, you know, on Sunday, I asked the question, um, "What's in a name?" You know, what's, what's in a name? And I got that question. That was the title of my message. I got that question from Pharaoh. Because uh, Pharaoh uh, asked the question, So who is the Lord? Uh, who is this Lord who I should serve? And, and what is God? He, he, Pharaoh didn't have a clue what Moses was talking about. And, and he said, when he said that God sent me, Pharaoh was basically saying, so what is this name of God? What, who is this God that you have? And in our catechism, we learn that God is, he's a spirit, he's infinite, he's eternal, he's unchangeable. We learn that, that he's all wise, all power, he, he's, he's, he is holiness to the, to the core, he is justice, he is goodness, he is truth. These are all the things of God and God reveals himself by making known the proclamation of his name. To worship God is to call upon the name of Jesus. It's to call upon the name. In Genesis chapter 12 verse 8 it says, From there he went on towards the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Okay? So God reveals himself by making known his name. And to worship God is to call upon the name of the Lord. When we go before a holy and righteous God, we come before him. If you get on your knees, that's great. I suggest you do it. If you close your eyes and raise your hand and turn on your favorite praise and worship music, that's great. I suggest you do it. But when you call upon the name of God, or, or when you come to worship God, you call upon his name and you adore him. 
He loves, he inhabits those adorations that you give to God. And so, uh, the first thing we, when we, when we worship God is we call upon his name. Uh, Deuteronomy 28, 58 says, we fear him. Not in a, I'm scared of you, but in a holy, righteous fear. Deuteronomy 28, 58 says, If you do not carefully follow all the words of the law, which are written in this book, and do not revere this glorious and awesome name, the Lord your God, you're going to have consequences. It's just the way it is. There are consequences for not revering the holiness of God. Um, Our nation is suffering the consequences right now. (coughs) Because we did not revere the name of God in 1972, we had some justices on the Supreme Court that thought that they would step out out of the law of God, disrespect the nature of God, and become judicial activists and say, you know, we really don't believe that, that a little human being that lives in the womb of a woman is not created by God. It's just a blob. We are suffering the consequences of, of taking the Word of God out of school. We are suffering the consequences of allowing filthy, soft porn on ABC, NBC, CBS, on cable news channels. Hey, folks, we're not watching Hee Haw anymore. We're not watching the Waltons anymore. What happened to Little House on the Prairie? I mean, now it's, 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 uh, uh, you know, uh, all of this garbage, the two men, whatever that is, the, the two waitresses, whatever that is, it's filth. It's all about sex and drugs. It's, it's, it's deranged language and it's being pushed by Hollywood. And, we fight against it. Now, you know, we have people that, may, that stand up and say, hey, this isn't right. We, we don't like this. This is wrong. And I appreciate the people that are doing that. They need to continue doing that. But the other thing I think would be very helpful is for churches across America to get into prayer. Hello, Kelsey and my dear wife. It's so important to understand as we are as we are understanding the call of God, that when we evoke the name of Jesus, things can be turned around. Now, we have just witnessed the Supreme Court move back to a a, a judicial following the legislative law of the land. She's not going to reinterpret anything. She's going to stick with what it says. And, uh, and the, the people that love to rewrite the laws, those, those, those judges that, that aren't happy with our Constitution, that, that really want to, to remake America, fundamentally change America, they're not, they're not in power anymore in the Supreme Court. So what's this going to mean? This means that the radical, radical people who hate, hate, life and hate God, your enemies, spiritual enemies, need to be won over. Not with spears and guns, not with war, but with prayer. We need a revival in America. And God's people will only see revival if we don't get on our face and start crying out to God. And so, we we start with evoking His name, we start with calling on His name, we praise his name, Second Samuel 22, uh, 50. Therefore, I'll praise you, O Lord, among the nations. I'll sing praise to your name. We as a nation, we sing out to God. Man, I, if for those of you that, that, that got in on a little bit of what we did here at the beginning of this month, uh, here on Saturday, and then we showed on, on, on Sunday morning, Rabbi Khan and just that, that, that message to America. One of the absolute most powerful, heart-wrenching messages I think I've ever been a part of. It, it, it caused me to be proud of my nation. It caused me to appreciate who God is and, and what He's doing. It caused me to be grateful that I'm a Christian living in this land and that I have a, 
uh, fundamentally, I have a right as an American citizen to call on the name of anybody I want. I, I choose Jesus. And then I have a right to come and teach you to do the same. And we are facing an election right now that could take all those rights away from us. We could move into socialism and quickly into communism, and we are one generation away from losing it all. That's what Ronald Reagan said, and I believe it with all my heart. And just because we got a good Supreme Court justice does not mean that our battle is over. It means that our battle begins. And we as God's holy and, and called people of God, we get to understand the importance of calling on His name, worshiping His name, fearing His name, praising His name, glorifying His name. Psalm 86, 9. Hear this. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, O Lord. They will glorify they, they, you will be glorified by your name. I love it when this nation calls upon the name of Jesus. And I'm not ashamed to call upon the name of Jesus. But there will be some that, that will choose to go the Exodus 20 verse 7 route. And they will choose the way of wickedness. And they'll choose to take his name in vain. And the Bible says you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Folks, the more I dig into God's word, the more I realize I got to watch what I say. I got to hold my tongue. I got to check my attitude. The only way I can do that is by the spirit of the living God who calls upon me daily to confess and to live in gratefulness that I get to live in a great nation, I get to live in a wonderful state, I get to have a, 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 a great fellowship of believers and to, fe and to worship God with you day every day. I get to love you and I get to be loved by you. Man, Pastor Appreciation Month. I was blown away once again with the cards and cookies and bars and just the, the all of the wonderful cards and gifts that you guys gave me. You blew my mind. The prayers that I know you're, you're covering uh, your pastor with. There's anointing in that, you guys. There's blessing in that. There's encouragement. Man, for those of you that have, you, you, you listen to me daily, but you have different churches, love on your pastor. You still have a few days. This is the time. Please. I'm, I'm one who's filled to the brim with, with pastor appreciation love. I'm just, I'm just giving you a word. Reach out and love on your pastor. Because it, it, mean, it means a lot. Anyway, um, this is what God is doing with the church as we come before him. Now, where does the power come from? Where does the anointing come from? It comes from the understanding of the name that you have been saved in, that you have been washed in, that you have been cleansed in, that you have been brought into. You see, God comes to us. Remember the scripture, Jesus leaves the 99, goes to the one lost sheep. We were the one lost sheep. He brings us back to the fold. John 6, says that, that no one can come to the Son unless the Father draws him. Uh, we know that God, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5, puts the word into a heart and he makes us alive for what? To see our sin, confess our sin, and to receive and believe what God has done for us for one big reason, so that we could enter into a serious, serious spirit of, of worship every day, 24-7. I think the Christian church today has lost its way because it doesn't know how to worship God on a daily basis, on an hourly basis. Hey, let me give an example. When we go into the worship of God, we know what we're worshiping. We're worshiping Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we understand in the midst of that worship who He, who he is and, and what He's done. For example, let's take the name Elohim. Elohim means God. God is the word that signifies the creative power and the omnipotence of God. Omnipotence of God. Do you know that when you call upon the name of Jesus, that his power is righteously and powerfully delivering you from yourself and back to the cross? It's true. I'm going to do something right now. Hey, Faye. 
Come here a second. Faye and I have been talking about this. Okay, my, my, my camera's dark. Help me. You're in front of uh, about 20 people, but just help me now. Camera's dark? Yeah, it's dark. I want it lighter. Okay. Oh, dear. Hit X. X. Let's see. Can I take this off of here? I'm sorry. i got to do right. this. I'm not sure how to get it without... Oh, I'm not sure how to get out of there without... you got to keep it tipped that way. All right. right, let's just roll on. Sorry. No, I, I thought you told me you could make it lighter. Well, I did, and then you said you wanted it darker. Oh, you want to grab that thing? It is dark. Okay. I see that. Oh, it's very dark. No. There you go. Okay, you want to grab that thing on the floor? Yeah. All right. Sorry, folks. We're good. Thank you. You bet. Just trying to make it a little better for you as we're rolling along here. Okay, so sorry about that. So we have the we have the names these names Elohim means God Elohim is the word that signifies the creative power and the omnipotence it's the plural form foreshadowing the revelation of the trinity when you go before God we worship father son and holy spirit he is perfect he is one his unity draws us into the unity that will be had when we are wed to God we will be wed to God and we'll be one with God for all of eternity. Therefore, God wants a deeper understanding when we come before him. You call out on the name. You raise your hands to heaven. You say, I worship you, Elohim. I worship you. Another name that we can call on, El Shaddai. El Shaddai is the name God used with Abraham. Shaddai means mountain. It's used in conjunction with the word El. El means Almighty God. Isn't that awesome? So when you're praying out to God, when you're confessing to God, you're talking to God, you say, God, you bring me up on this mighty mountain. This mighty mountain of what? Of faith. You bring me up in this mighty mountain, this powerful place where you meet me in the midst of the, of the burning bush. Your word is the burning bush, only now it's burning on the tops of the people's head in the book of Acts. It's burning in the bosom. In Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9, it talks about that. And so God is, is faithfully meeting us and, and drawn us into the, into the El, into the almightiness of God. As you're calling out in Him, you say, Father God, I worship you, Elohim. I worship you, El Shaddai. Can also mean this. El Shaddai can mean Genesis 21, 33. He is the God who is all sufficient. Genesis 21, 33. Write that down if you're taking notes. Listen to this. Abraham planted a tamarack tree in Beersheba. And there he called upon the name of the Lord, the eternal God, the all-sufficient God. So when we go before God and we call upon his name, when we evoke his name, we are believing in the meanings of these names. Folks, when you get saved by the Lord Jesus Christ, he, he puts his name on you. You you walk in the power of that name. Have you ever heard of this one? Adonai. Adonai is another name. Literally means Lord and Master. It conveys the idea and the rulership, the dominion. Exodus twenty three seventeen. Three times a year, all the men are appear to appear before the sovereign Lord. This this Adonai literally means Master. It conveys the idea of rulership and dominion. We believe that God is, is, is drawing us into his full and complete dominion. Here's another one. Melech is the word that, that speaks for God as king. Nebuchadnezzar says, I praise the king of heaven. Daniel 4.37, David recognized God as king. The Lord is king forever. Psalm 10.16, 10, he is the king of glory. Psalm 24.8, I exalt you, my God and my King, Psalm 141.1. Amazingly enough, these names are to be understood. Oh, I'm just scratching the surface. Someone is hitting 
Who's the person that's hitting the angry emoji? Hey, who's hitting the angry emoji? Let me know. We need to pray for you. There's something going on, something wrong. There's a spirit that's not right here. As we're teaching the Word of God, uh, there's, there's, there's something working on the heart of someone. Just pray in the name of Jesus. Someone's shooting up angry emojis every day. I don't know who you are. One of 14 people. Let's, let's pray in the name of Jesus. Father, draw all of us into a love relationship with you. Amen. But this morning, I want us to look at God's special name and the revealed connection that, that, that brought Moses to Israel and Israel to God and brought us to God. It's a powerful thing. It's a powerful thing what God is doing and how he's doing it. You see, Stephen learned, Moses uh, was learned of all wisdom of the Egyptians. He was mighty in word and deed. And, and as Stephen recognized this, he knew that it wasn't the learnedness of what Moses had to offer, but it was the call of God on Moses is what Moses had to offer. It wasn't the fact that he had a PhD and really with the equivalent education of that time in Pharaoh's, he would have had like a master's or a doctorate degree in all of the studies. That's not what God was after. God was after he was after the, the, the call upon Moses to, that for Moses to step out and do what he was called to do. He knew that, that, that he was an Israelite and from birth and, and he was real, willing to relinquish his Egyptian inher, inher, inheritance and to step into the inheritance that God had given him through, through his, 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 his blood, through, his, through the Israelites. And my friend... When we call upon the name of Jesus, Jesus who is a Jew, he comes and he lives and dwells within you. And we are, we are uh, uh, grafted, the Bible says, grafted into Christ. In other words, you have Jewish blood flowing through you. And we are called to return, just like Moses did. Return to our, our heritage, our love, our master, our Lord. This Jewish carpenter who died, he was perfect. He died for your sins and brought us into the newness of God's love and life. He brought us there so that we could see what Moses saw. The Bible says Moses saw the eternal glory of God's kingdom. The Bible said that God allowed Moses to, to see how he would smash through and triumph the stronghold that, that Pharaoh had over the millions of Israelites. God allowed Moses to see the holy city, that it was made of precious stones, the streets paved with gold, and the, the pleasures all around that, that, would, that would accompany those that were God's children. Moses saw the Lord, who we know his name is Jesus, that would make him an heir of everything, and he would sit with Jesus and rule and reign, because he'd be wed to Christ and we'd be wed to Christ. These are the things in which God was doing in Moses. And these are the things that God is doing in us. He's doing it in you. And the beautiful picture of how God is doing this is God is allowing us to just experience those names, to, to, to come into worship with those names, to, be, to be exalt those names, and to, and to thank God for those, those mighty names that you wrote down today. You call upon those names. There's power in those names. There's deliverance in those names. Tomorrow we're going to pick up on this. And we're going to get into the burning bush. I want to talk about, I want to make a correlation between the burning bush. And, um, and uh, Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9. If you, if you can, go turn, turn your Bibles and look that up for tomorrow. Because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do that correlation. We're gonna jump to Acts chapter two, and and when the, when the Holy Spirit came upon the church, there were tongues of fire. There was literally fire on their head, but it didn't burn up their hair. And and <clears throat> when Jesus came in and and he ignited their bosom, when he let them aflame, there was such a hunger for God, a love for God, 
an, an anointing of God upon them that they just they wanted to drink deep God's word to be live in God's name to saturate themselves with the presence and the anointing and the greatness of God. We're going to talk about that great fire tomorrow. So I want you to join me. Hello, Pam and Shannon Steiner. Welcome. We're going to get into that and we're going to take a look at that. But for now, I want you to just, just, just dwell on those names, on the powerful greatness of those names. I'm going to pray for you. If you have any prayer requests, shoot them to me. I'll pray, them, uh, I'll pray your prayer request as, as we go into prayer. Um, and I thank you. I thank God for you. And I thank God that you are you are part of the church. You're part of the work of God. And uh, we just we just praise the Lord. So let's let's go to the Lord in prayer. Like I said, if you have any prayer requests, shoot it up there right now. And uh, let's just thank God and, and ask for God's 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 grace and His anointing on you today. Father God, we we love you and we thank you, <clears throat> Lord. As we as we pick apart this this message that was partly preached on Sunday. I didn't get through the whole thing, but Father God, as we pick this baby apart and we really wrestle with, with the beautiful thoughts of, of your name, Jesus, and, and, and the significance of your name, Father God, we are, we are in awe of, of all that you are and, and all that you do for us. Father God, how you, you ushered us into the covenant promise that was that was that was first proclaimed with Abraham and fulfilled through Christ on the very mountain that the burning bush was located the burning bush that that is located in the word and in the name of God father God uh, you told Moses to say the I am has sent you you drew Moses out of sin and sent him to uh, the people that 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 are yours and father God you drew us out of sin you spoke your name into us you created life within us and now, Father God, you send each of us uh, out to the same way that you sent Moses. You send each of us out to declare Elohim, that God signifies the great power and omnipotence of our very existence. You, you call us out to, to declare El Shaddai, that, that, that the name of God is great. He is a mighty mountain of faith and he is our almighty God. You send us out to declare Adonai, which means that God is our master and he is the one who has complete and full dominion. You send us out to evoke the name of Melech, which means God is king. He is the king of heaven as he is the king of earth and he is my king and he is your king. And Father, help us to meditate on this. Help us to come before you today. Father God, give us the burning bush a uh, 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 flame within our spirit to be hungry for you, to be anointed by you. Give us the people that you're sending us to. Lord, there was a specific people group that you sent Moses to, and there is a specific people group you're sending each and every one of us to. Father, we pray for your anointing. We pray for your blessing. And Father God, uh, as my mother pointed out, I pray over the person that daily has been sending up the angry faces. Lord, your word is working on someone's spirit. And Lord, maybe they're saved and they don't, they don't understand. Or Father God, maybe they're not saved and they need to be saved. Father God, I send the paraclete. I send the Holy Spirit by the speaking of my word, by the anointing. I call upon the name of El Shaddai. I call upon the name of Adonai. I call upon the name of El Ahim that you would, Father God, work through your word to draw this person who needs to know your love. And we long for this person to be brought into your love with the mighty working of the Holy Spirit. We commit every person that's listening to these names. And we commit every person that's listening into the drawing deeper to the cross and to the love of God. We commit every person to the surrender of the soul and to the anointing of God and the infilling of the Holy Spirit that you would save every one of us in the way that you intended to save up mankind till that we know that we're going to heaven. We know that we're saved by grace alone. That we know that Jesus is dwelling in our hearts. Father, I commit my, my dear friends to you, the church to you. I commit this anointing upon the church to you. And Father, I pray that you bless the church as we go forth today. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Who said yes? Who is this? Of course, Paige Buckeye. Yes. Hallelujah, Paige Buckeye. Praise the Lord. Give me an amen. Amen and amen. Yes. God loves you. I love you. I love you in the Lord. You guys are precious. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Sharon Odegaard. Love you too. And Lulu. Great, 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 great. Hey, we're going to keep rolling. We're talking about the fire tomorrow. We had to get into the names to draw us into the fire. And the fire in the bosom. The burning of God. It's in you. It's in me. It's what God wants is he's bringing us home. But we want to bring as many with us as possible because it's all about lifting up that name, that beautiful name. Hey, this is Pastor Sean Bowman coming to you live from Victory Lutheran, Jamestown, North Dakota, USA, declaring the power of God through a nation that has been set aside to send its missionaries to the four corners of the earth because Jesus is coming. He could come tonight. Call upon his name, trust him through his word, and know that salvation is yours through the Son of God. This is Pastor Sean thanking you for being with me. Join me again tomorrow, 9 a.m., as we open up God's precious word. God bless.